That's why I'm not it. Okay, if you look at here, the x-axis, we love the x and y-axis, I will mathematically explain, is the expenditure per person per year. Healthcare. As long as you spend $1,000 per person, and if you look at the life expectancy, it's somewhere you will hit 66, 67, 68, plus and minus 3. So which means that right now, longevity is the highest in Japan, right? 83 for men, 85 for women. In Europe, 78 to 81. US also is similar. It looks like women, they live longer than men. Do you know why, Professor Nelson? Okay, I will tell, I tell all my mother. Women are smarter than men. They know how to take care of themselves, I think. <laughs> the exercise is the, the kitchen. No, everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so the, uh, in Europe actually the worst, if I'm not wrong, is, you know, it's uh, Russia, 63, 65, I think most likely the alcohol, extreme alcohol consumption contributes the less longevity. Okay, this is the, the institute in the United States is called National Academy of Engineering. Uh, it's the, maybe the second or third most respected institute in the world, like the Nobel Committee or the Kyoto Committee. Uh, this is the, at the end of 2008, they come up with a certain number of the areas that we are going to challenge or we will have obstacles or every obstacles will come with opportunities. If you look at these 14 of them, three of them are related to uh, Biomedical engineering, and I'm going to repeat the one word that I used seven years ago. Biomedical engineering name will be history within the 10 years. We get ready to use the term healthcare engineer. Okay, so the, it's healthcare related field. Too. The first one, if you look at advanced health informatics, could be any angle you can look at. Scientist or electrical engineer or healthcare, health information systems, wherever you look at, this is a very important field because the beginning of the 20th century, the plague wiped out the half of the European population, started from Spain. Simple mathematical model to look at the progress of the disease will significantly reduce the damage. So it's to look at the effect of the drug, drug release. To look at the uh, progression of the drug in the body. It's everything related to the modeling and informatics is very, very important. The areas is related to the engineering better medicine. I think we are right now it's investing so much money and time for nanoscience, nanomedicine, nanoparticles, especially for cancer research. Although these nanoparticles are not, to my best knowledge, heavily used in clinic yet. Uh, they are investigating, but it's showing a significant progress for the treatment of special cancers. So if, if I was young, like you gentlemen sitting there, and if I start all over the, again, I will do two things. Either I will work on drug release and control, especially related to nano, or I will only and only work on the rehabilitation side. Because these two areas, in my view, are really shape up the healthcare next 10, 20 years. Right, John? I got that from something. The last one is the reverse engineering the brain, which is so-called, we call, called neural engineering. Neural engineering is not a new uh, term, actually. Although I claim that I coined the term neural engineering in 1995, 1996. Many people, I mean, they were doing research in uh, neural engineering. They did not call neural engineering, but the bunch of us, including Sergio, Nitish, and the other folks in the society, sort of godfathers, they said, okay, this is neural engineering or neural engineering, we cannot. But the people like John Clark, before I was born, he was working with neural engineering, uh, Perry Cotonas or Ben Johnson, and you name it. The idea is we learn from brain and we implement in industry. Simply, how the brain looks like, right? is the most amazing organ we have in our body is the brain. 
Although as Egyptian people, they used to take the brain off, all the organs off, except the heart, right? Before the mummification process. Brain is, consumes roughly 20, 25% of the fuel in the body. But the weight wise is no more than one kilogram. If you look at the inside, there are 10 to the 11 nerves. Can you imagine any device, any instrumentation, every bill has 10 to the 11 transistors and they have 10 to the 15 connections and they can make a decision that is unbelievable. Whatever you believe, in my view, this is the best thing ever, ever designed. Great. And it will take our lifetime to really figure out that at least the certain capacity that we can implement in reality and use it. So we learn from neuroscience, we implement in industry, what I mean, how we recognize the patterns. When you go to the airport, they have the camera, they look at, they try to take your photo, try to resemble somebody else in the list or something. So this is, they use the artificial neural network learned from biology. And sometimes from industry you learn and you look at the other side to build the biological parts as well. So I don't know if I have a time for the neural engineering. I prepared roughly 100 some slides to talk today. But this is also a good excuse that I have to invite you one more time and come here and talk more on this. Biomedical engineering as a market wise, as you can see that <coughs> investment on healthcare will continue increase, at least somewhere for 30%. Um, healthcare, they are actually all related to each other, biomedical engineering, but I want to just to take your attention to something that's very important is nanotechnology, nanoscience. Most of the emerging countries, emerging markets, such as emerging powers, Brazil, India, Turkey, they're heavily investing on nanoscience. In fact, in Turkey right now, there are three to four nanomedicine centers, which quality-wise can beat any research institute in the United States in the same area, in Ankara. The government is putting 10 to 15 million euro for each center just as a startup, plus the equipment, plus also the building. It's coming up in a fast because it's a smart for developing countries such as Egypt, Egypt to invest something is a niche area, something different, something just not depend on the old instrumentation mindset, the new area and make the case and improve the quality of it. And Brazil also, uh, they put like almost $400 million for two years for only nanotechnology. India, somewhere $300 million just for research. Is that amazing? The market for the biomedical instrumentation is, we are talking about the $1 trillion and above. The top is the, of course, uh, is biomedical devices, it's $300 billion, but at least 80% are related to cardiovascular respiratory, not yet for the neuro. The mind share goes to biopharm engineering, biopharmaceutical science is the drug design, intelligent drug design and delivery. We are talking about the 800, 900 billion dollars market. This is corresponds to, if you look at the GDP of Brazil and Spain, just into the investment fund research. This is incredible. Look at the numbers. I was I went to Rome last night, I was looking for something to at least bring something to your attention. It's doable to improve the healthcare quality and reduce the healthcare cost. I will talk about very, very simple things that even you can do it in your office. How we can go to the electronic uh, record system. Because it seems that it's very, uh, It's not really hardcore research many people can think about. But the cost for US for not to having efficient uh, electronic health record, we are talking about somewhere 70 to 100 billion dollars uh, loss, which is much higher than GDP or the Egypt. Just electronic health. And also investment in this area is going to be significant because 
developed countries and also developing countries must invest on that to reduce the time of the medical doctor, reduce the healthcare costs, and also the pain for the people they have to wait in the line hours and hours. It's going to be very important. So this is the first topic I will talk to you briefly. What we have done, this paper is coming with dietary transactions. Uh, just to acknowledge most of the work is done with, uh, by my students and uh, I was just advising them. Full credit goes to the HM. The idea is uh, electronic medical record is the old-fashioned paper-based system. It's not efficient. It's difficult to store, it's difficult to retrieve, and also the, uh, when you go to the, any medical doctors 10, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, all the papers are on the ground, everybody can walk in, clean person, someone can grab it and can go. So it's also for the ladies, every woman, they should take the mammogram after 40, every six months, they have to repeat it. It's critical to comparison the previous records to look at any, anything malignant or the, any problems in their mammograms. So using old fashioned, just to have hard copy of something, it's not really feasible, it's not good because you cannot, sometimes they lost the record, sometimes it's difficult to put together. The electronic system allows you just one click, you will bring the old one, you can compare the, the new one and it will help you uh, make a better decision. But the, the, uh, also that at the end I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the our low cost electronic medical record system just based on off-the-shelf file maker software. <clears throat> I think I repeat the same thing. For the uh, advantage of the old system, you don't have to worry about training anyone. The new uh, EMR, always you need to train the people. There's uh, some drawbacks of this. Okay. EMR is the electronic medical record, simply defines the uh, Define a medical record stored in digital format, and the, you can see also the MHR, they are the same. <coughs> can you have a glass of water? So. <coughs> I'm not going to read, this is significantly reduce the cost of the supply, storage, time. Okay. Uh, the, the cost of the EMR. There are several electronic uh, health record systems developed. Right? The problem is, one electronic health record system in one hospital does not match the second one. So there is no scalability, it's not customized. The second major issue, even the developed country like the United States, only 25% of the system our online, our electronic country. 75% of the medical record in the United States, right now, they are all papers. It's amazing, isn't it? I and mean, you can think that everything is connected. The Obama administration, I'm not here making propaganda about the Obama administration. They are going to spend $10 billion for every year, next five years, to really help the FDC uh, government sponsored or state hospitals go to the health uh, record system. It's going to be a major obstacle is the private hospitals in the sense that they have already the certain systems to really put together into the whole system. They are, I mean, the US is going to spend, at least in my view, somewhere $300 billion next 10 years. UK, uh, they had a very major initiatives Population of the UK, if I'm not wrong, any Brits? Somewhere 60, 70 million, right? Oh. Okay, it failed because they were hoping to get, this, get the system done in 2010 and they delayed to 2014. The investment, almost like 50 billion US dollars, is 20, 30 million billion British pounds, if I'm not wrong. It's a complete failure, so. But they are still working on to get it into places. These are the two major initiatives from these countries. 
SA country, I will tell the numbers if you're interested. What's going on with electronic health care? Okay. Um, there are several systems are developed, and the, for even the developing countries, it's not that I will continue talking. Uh, the problem that is developed the electronic health record system mainly sponsored by the U.S. government. They are used either in Kenya or Malawi or somewhere else to help the HIV-related, uh, AIDS-related disease. But all the systems, although the U.S. spent tons of money for those, they required some, some level of the uh, experts to really scale the system, to use the system properly. Because the softwares, they have, you have to know Java or the Visual Basics or other sophisticated tools, it's not user friendly. So the, the file maker I'm talking here is much easier to use and it's, I think the cost is somewhere from 300 to 500 dollars and we are currently using for Alzheimer's disease at the Bennett Health Group in Arizona. Okay, so the issue is here, we want user-friendly, we want scalable, can be used for other diseases, can be compatible with others, and could be customized. And the, again, the, uh, I have, I don't remember the name of many other systems, they are not the most efficient one, they are just uh, in an unorganized fashion with the sponsor of the U.S. Health and the Human Services Department they developed three widely used ones in mainly Africa. 17 clinics in Kenya and also two in Malawi, if I'm not I think uh, this is the Obama propaganda. Massachusetts is a one example. I think Ali can help with the Massachusetts system. Massachusetts, if I'm not wrong, is the only state in the United States they provide or indirectly suggest or ask the people to contribute to get the basic insurance, right? Okay, so the, uh, I, the message is an interesting example. I believe that we cannot solve any world's problem unless we invest on education. Education is the solution for everything we face. Whatever you can think about is a problem. Massachusetts is interesting state because the education level in Massachusetts is, if I'm not wrong, is the highest in the United States. So that's why people, uh, they are not afraid to spend for healthcare. Uh, we have more money than Massachusetts, right, John? In Texas, right now. But the, the system in Massachusetts is working with little investment, little supply by the people and every citizen of Massachusetts state, they have a basic health insurance. And the whole state is not complete, they, they have a healthcare electronic medical record system either. Okay. These are the more European folks about the uh, e-health related market initiatives. Okay. The one that I mentioned is Java-based electronic health records used in Kenya. It's the 17 clinics uh, for HIV research. The many problems they are facing because the end users, it's very important that Kenyan should be at the as end user up to scale the system or can make it compatible. It's very difficult for them to play around to really use it because it requires the basic knowledge of the program knowledge. Okay, I just wanna go through fast and quick, then I will, okay. These two systems, uh, one is the for AIDS, is in Kenya, and the other one is that they use the Malawi. They are currently, have been used by the groups, by the US-based groups, and the electronic health record system is significant. They have reduced the, uh, these two system in Africa the time-wise from 31 minutes to 21 minutes, the visit times 42 to 32, physician times cut half, so it's really, really helpful for the healthcare. These are the main problems uh, with the current systems based on Java, and the, that's why the 
solutions file medical system. I don't want you to sleep. I want to just have one job for you. It was 15 years ago. We were in Taiwan. We were talking about the health cares. Uh, I think he was either the hotel manager or something. He said that he used a phone call from hospitals. Uh, their friends, they were in hospitals. They asked, how come your father was not at the hospital today? Uh, apparently, a doctor uh, comes to office. They see the four people. They always come there for treatment purposes. And the, one day, only three of them showed up. The fourth one was not there. And the doctor said, how come he's not here? He said, well, he couldn't make it today because he's sick. I think the waiting time, uh, many people, they go to the hospital even they are not sick. Real people, they, they are sick, they cannot go to the hospital. <coughs> okay. The file maker is cheap, it's, and I'm not making any money from the Mac. The one problem with the file makers, they are initially designed to use for the Mac. It's not, it was not compatible with the Microsoft or the uh, Dell computers. Right now, they, are, they have a new versions, although slightly expensive, but can be used for everybody. Okay, let's, let's skip those and... If you have any question, you can ask me on this. I'm gonna go to the much interesting places. Second healthcare-related cost is imaging modalities. Okay. If you look at the, the imaging equipment cost, if you're planning to buy MRI or PET scanners, if you don't, yeah, I mean, you have to spend at least $1.5 million in MRI. It's extremely expensive for developing countries to afford this device. So the global healthcare perspective, it's very important to have portable, cheap, and reliable, of course the reliable is very important word here, uh, devices for developing countries. So if China or somebody else in Egypt is developing MRI device, cost $300,000. This is the purpose of the healthcare. This is the, our main job is to really reduce the health code as a biomedical engineer. Okay? So the focus for the young folks especially could be in that area, how we can develop reliable, low cost, and portable system to improve the healthcare. Some of the numbers are striking. If you look at the the, even the cost when you go to the hospitals, if someone takes the MRI in the US right now for $800, just one MRI scanning itself. For research purposes, even if you have grants in the same institution, still they ask you to spend $300, $400 minimum for these scans. PET is very useful for the metabolic activities and the genomics related imaging. Much more expensive than the MRI and others. But the, I want to emphasize one thing is here is the CT scans, especially right now, dual energy CT. Uh, my group, I'm also affiliated with the Mayo Clinic. We are very much interested to really push the envelope for the dual energy CT. I'm not going to talk about some of the research we are getting incredibly important results that we can determine in your occluded artery, the lipid, or classification by just looking for the CT. It's, it's going to be much cheaper than anything. Just wait to hear my next presentation next couple months. It's going to be revolutionary. Uh, the X-ray is cheaper even at the airport, right? I mean, there's a new device in the US, a whole body scanners. Uh, half of the people are arguing not to go, not to get inside them. But it's actually, the, even the airport scanners are, they have less radiation than the CT you get. Okay. Uh, the market wise is, <clears throat> if you look at the distribution of the, oops. It's almost where the Democrats are located in the US for the more medical imaging. Uh, this, uh, if you look at the election patterns in the United States, you can turn off the machine right now. Uh, anywhere close to Walter are the Democrats, 
anywhere even inside the Republican. It looks like Democrats always complain they don't have money, but they have more access to uh, medical instrumentation and devices. This is where uh, John and I believe. John, I'm pointing the right place, right? Houston. We have it's more. Okay, I am at the wrong place. Because we don't stay at home too much. We just keep traveling, that's why we don't even know where we are living. Okay, the 60,000 healthcare employee, 26 hospitals, is a mecca of the hospitals and healthcare actually. Houston, it's an amazing place. Highly recommend it to visit. Uh, this is the uh, imaging market. If you look at the almost 25% of the market is European, mostly Siemens and the other uh, companies, 44 US and the rest mainly uh, Japan, but it's right now China is coming up fast. They are, uh, two years ago they took me somewhere, they are building the MRI machine and they told the cost that they can build the MRI device for $70,000. It's hard to believe, but I think I will not be surprised that soon we will see the Chinese made MRI machines in market $100,000 or $200,000. Incredible. Okay, the revenue from the medical instrument imaging is increasing significantly. This is the white column is the million dollars uh, revenue for, okay. This is the uh, projected revenue. As you can see that we are talking about the billion dollars. The market is almost getting closer, closer to $300 billion. Okay, how are you doing timelines? I'm starting the new video. Okay, let me talk about a little bit of neural engineering as well too. Okay. This is the definition of the neural engineering. It uh, was the first issue of the journal Neural Engineering as led by uh, Dominic Drum from the Case Western as well as Andrew Schwartz from the Pittsburgh. The definition is that this is a new field, emerging field, based basically Coalesces with the science, engineering, with neuroscience. Basically, to understand the dynamics of the complex neural systems, I think more importantly, develop something to improve the well being of the people. Because we are aging society, I think I, the population, even when we talk with the local people, all days everybody has six, seven kids right now, new generations, not you, Ahmed. They are having only one kid living in Egypt. Even. So the, but the, it's important, in my view, it's not important to live longer. It's important to have the quality of the life. So the healthcare is very important to really, uh, to improve the quality of the healthcare with the help of the engineering and the technology and science to develop better devices and systems also to, um, to the problems related to neurological limitation, dysfunction uh, related activities. Again, I talk about the brain, and let's skip this one. The areas is the, uh, right now, brain computer interface and their applications in neural rehabilitation engineering is actually one of the most promising areas. If you look at the neurological disease in the US alone, as you can see that the, every numbers on this screen, on scales, are millions. From Alzheimer's disease to multiple sclerosis, it's incredible. But the issue is where neurological damage people, they are not going to be, um, their cost to society is much higher. I think, uh, can you imagine that someone you love so much that cannot recognize you? So their Alzheimer's is simple. So the, uh, you, we have to uh, hospitalization and taking care of them. It's an enormous cost itself, actually. Therefore, the Alzheimer's disease alone, billion and billion dollars, is more than $10 billion per year in the United States to cost the society. <clears throat> the brain computer interface currently has been used more commercial businesses uh, than actually the medical applications. The pioneering people in the field, Donohoe, Miguel Nicolás, and the 
who has such encounter. The group in Graz, uh, those people, they were the first to idea is, is it possible <coughs> to really understand the intent of the brain, then decode this intent, use this intent to activate artificial limb, artificial processes, or robot arm somewhere else. Because brain is the most dynamic organ. Even when you're sleeping, brain is always active. The activity of the brain is generated and it's sent through the peripheral nerve system to activate upper and lower limb. What we are doing with brain computer interface, we are taking this activity in a different routing. We are trying to decode this activity and activate the artificial I mean, the neural processes or in another room located the robots. I will tell you the advantage of the robots as well too. Look at this. If you recall the brain activity uh, using several different ways, I will mention in a minute, and then to look at what brain, brain is telling through the peripheral system to the uh, arms and legs. Can we use this one to activate the uh, wheelchair or someone is unable to move and turn on and off the uh, electrical electricity in the room or communicate with the environment or if someone is not capable of making phone calls and get the intent of the person and dial the phone to help them. And most, uh, the more interesting part is to actually go back to, to look at here neurorehabilitation purposes. Is it possible to really use the brain, in, uh, brain computer interface to in, improve the speed of the recovery in stroke, especially? The issue is when we use the brain computer interface, it's very important to get some feedback. The current system used more industrial purposes or the medical application, mainly based on the visual feedbacks. So you look at how far you're from the distance and this error is estimated and helps for the next time when you're moving the cursor. So there's a try and error, always trajectories have been corrected to the right directions. But the, this clever man, smart guy, he came up with a different concept. The other suggestion is, he said, we have in our brain two areas, right? One is the motor cortex, one is the sensory cortex. The purpose of the motor cortex is to really activate, the, send the orders through the peripheral system, activate the limbs. Sensory one is receive the feedback, receive the visual, receive anything coming from outside. Then do the planning and they transfer the correct trajectory, the motor cortex, and comes down. So they propose to give the feedback directly to the sensory area. How do you do that? This is a simple example. Either you can get these proximity errors and distance comes to somewhere in the shoulder and the neurons, they carry the information into the sensory area. Much smarter one. Is it possible to, oh, it's not, oh, I don't have that one. The, the new uh, suggestion by actually Miguel Nicolás, I would like to acknowledge, he suggests that the feedback is coming, has to be converted into the electrical stimulus, electrical activity, directly evoke the area, sensory area in the brain. Okay. I think it's going to be revolution uh, within the next to 10 to 20 years if the stimulus directly giving the brain and then have a whole cover and package system for the brain computer interface. This is the rehabilitation application. There is a moving target and the subject is trying to catch the, the target with the cursor. And each time when subject is moving, robot arms here and helping the subject to move that direction and is avoiding when the subject is in the right trajectory and is punishing if it's wrong direction, basically stiffs it, do not allow to move the hand. Okay. Uh, 
Worte. Aber die Tagen, dann habe ich das 50 Minuten, you said? Hypocampal is a small part of our brain. Actually, if you look at it, it looks like huge, but it's, we are talking about somewhere 1, 1.5 to 1.3 millimeter square to a power. Very tiny bit cubical area. If we remove this part from the brain, the, our long-term memory completely wiped out. So basically, only thing you will remember, two or three minutes discussion, I met with Ahmed, my name is Ahmed, and then four minutes later, if I come ask, you say, what's your name again? Because no long-term memory. Actually, sometimes it's better not to remember too much, actually. Especially uh, ladies, they always remember whenever you make a mistake 20 some seven years ago. Whatever you can do, they don't remember somehow. But if you make a one mistake, one mistake means that five minutes late for something or you forgot to buy something, they always remember. It could be the solution for the piece, maybe, that you don't have to look at so much past. If you look at the organ, it's very interesting. The inputs are coming from somewhere, projects into the group of the neuron DJ, then CA3, CA1. These are actually the most simplistic neurons in our body. Look, we call them pyramidal neurons. If you look at them, they are all lined up. Someone is waiting for the bus station or the train station or the airport. Gets the same input, and then process something. Then if you look at them all, but all together they do. It's a simple engineering system. You can see there's a multi-input, single output, or multi-input, multi-output systems. Okay, I'm going the wrong direction again. These are our research. I just want to tell you that what we are interested in this. We are creating Alzheimer's rats. These three genes knock down on these rats. We are very much interested what happens when we expose the hypocampal cells to nicotine. Question is why nicotine? Smoking is terrible. They have different responses from different parts of the body. If you are working in the respiratory uh, neural network or respiratory system, Nicotine has a depressive effect. But if you work in the hypocampal memory related, nicotine is a, uh, I don't want to, I'm trying to find the word that, I don't want to encourage you to go smoke today. It's a good stimulant. It's basically, uh, I'm not talking about the whole smoking, just the nicotine. It uh, it's, could be useful for the memory. I will show you the, what I mean that as a uh, stimulant device, okay? So the, we have two types of subjects. One is wild animal, has no problem with Alzheimer's disease. Other one, we knocked down their three genes, important genes, they became Alzheimer's animal. We give them nicot nicotine, we expose them. We look at their responses to <coughs> nicotine. We are recording uh, hypocampal oscillations. These oscillations are extremely useful. What our will be interested, we are looking for the problems at the molecular level, we want to understand the, uh, the more neural level and the system level, because we are also interested to develop drugs, drugs, drugs. So we are looking for nanomedicine, all the way system engineering, whole package. I'm going to talk about a tiny bit of this activity here. So the oscillations are very interesting. If you look at that hypercampal oscillation, Response to nicotine or carbocal, it doesn't matter, they are the same. Uh, we have initially continuous oscillations. They are just firing it somewhere less than three hertz. And then we have an area is a mix. It looks like is, there's a continuous, all of a sudden, group stem, they have high burst firing. And then they turn into the burst oscillation. The frequencies goes above five hertz and six hertz. They are the hypocampal oscillators. I think I have a better one, I'm not sure. But this is the, they start, we give the nicotine here, as you can see, they're continuous, 
there is a mixed group activity and then high burst activity. We have no clue what it means. We are just like simple engineers, we are looking for the activities. But there is an incredible difference between the response of the normal and Alzheimer's one. Somehow for Alzheimer's disease, the animals, when it comes to this area, this, they got stuck here, they have a long duration of mixed file and less the burst type activity compared to normal rats. So the, it looks like if we are able to, when we evoke the animal, if we let them stay less time in mixed area, more time in burst area, we could better really improve the condition. We are looking for a drug that somehow improves that condition. I want to skip the, all these. You guys are smarter than I am. I'm sure you know, everybody knows hidden macro process part. Let me show you the, the interesting part of it. This is the wild one, white one. Other one is the uh, transgenic Alzheimer's disease. Continues, no difference. And for the Alzheimer's one, they stay much longer duration in the mixed portion. And the burst one, they are much less. We know why. Because of the beta amyloid uh, accumulation outside, it's causing that difference. It's very important. We need to develop the smart, intelligent drug that reduces the beta amyloid outside. There's another good excuse to come back again, if Ahmed allows me. Let me talk about the slightly different technologies for the neuron. One area is the epilepsy. Medtronic company developed the totally implantable system to detect and also suppress the epilepsy activities. What system does, it looks like pacemaker. This system is put under the skin, on the chest. Okay? So the, let me tell in a nutshell what it means. If we have a bunch of neurons here, if we are a good electrical engineer, if we have a good supply, if you inject the current, electrical current into the system, you control the behavior of these neurons. Nobody knows why. There are several different theories. Most likely injecting the currents is affects the depolarization and repolarization of the action potentials. But we have no concrete solution. So bottom line, if you have a behavior like this here, is a random firing. If you here give the inject the uh, electrical currents, you suppress the activities. Certain type of decisions. They have this kind of behavior, we call them mob, like bandit behaviors. All of a sudden, they fire together, they are synchronized, desynchronized. If you have a system, detect the onset, and then inject the current into the system. We are talking about somewhere detection 200 milliseconds, and the injection of the current 100 milliseconds, within a 500 millisecond, you can detect and suppress the seizures. These are totally uh, implantable system. How we are going to implant the system? Initially, doctors uh, get the MRI. We know exact location. By surgery, they put the electrodes very close to these neurons. When events comes, the system detects the, when the events comes, and then this uh, electrical charge under the skin, send it to the brain, and they release into the neurons and suppress them. So again, if someone sits next to you, suffer from Alzheimer's disease, within a 500 millisecond time period, this person, even he or she may not realize they have been through the Alzheimer's. Okay? I mean, the uh, seizures. The future, the revolution is going to be, is it possible? to develop total implantable system to get the activities of the brain and then using wireless system to send these activities in the same room somewhere from 10 to 40 meters. If you look at the old system <coughs> developed by the BrainGate company, uh, actually I don't have the old system here, I think I took off, oops. Okay, the system is here. We have multi-array electrodes. They are intra-electrodes. They are directly put on the surface of the cortex. They are not on the skull, by the way, be careful. So we are recording from somewhere 64, 128, 
456 channels at the same time. This activity, information has been with the wire, is coming to another small microsystem here on top of skull. The function of the system is simply to do pre-processing and send the information using micro or nano scale laser. So data is going outside. What's coming out inside is the energy. How we can do it? Using inductive system. So energy is coming from outside, as you can see that, and the data is going outside. This is a simple uh, telemetry system. Size is micro level. At the top, this is the information has been sent outside. As you can see, the size of the system is completely negligible. Unless you have a bald head like me, and nobody can figure out that you're carrying that system. The big picture for the Alzheimer's disease, okay? Is it possible, using engineering techniques, computational techniques, uh, its systems, is it possible to understand the functions of this DJ uh, CA3, CA1? So basically, these are the areas that we were talking about. Signal is coming to hypocampal, projects DJ, projects CA3, CA1, and these. What we can do, if we know the input to CA3, if we know the output, we simply we do the best as an engineer, we estimate the transfer function. The Vasilis Marmaradis, who is a professor at the USC, I'm on the advisory board of their two national centers. The, he was the first actually who came up with the idea that he believed that this system is nonlinear system. Nonlinear, but uh, non uh, it's not non stationary it's a stationary nonlinear system. He proposed the model is nonlinear dynamical systems based on voltage expressions. So he's looking for projection from here to here, here to here, three different systems. He believes that this sort of like correlation of these nonlinear parameters could be related to the concept of memory. Nobody knows what it means, where it's stored actually. Okay? So these smart people, they are trying to, uh, they try to give the stimulus here multi-channel input, they record the output, and they try to get transfer function, and then remove this CAT, CA3 area, and replace this area with silicone. So the, they are trying to replace the non-functional part of the hypocampal using simple electronics. We are talking about the micro nano level electronics. So the big picture, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, the people, they lost memory, could be restored just using the simple electronics. This doesn't mean that we are going to use only this one. The, my warning for the young people is two things. One is, don't just work on diagnostic. Treatment is very important. Second thing is electronic and the technology is not the only solution. You look at the new areas, it's called regenerative medicine, to really activate and to use the uh, artificial tissue, artificial uh, material science that could help to, to help the regrowth of the neural network and other things. Future is the bionic man. I can get used to pronounce the term bionic man. It's almost half of them we have already. So what I'm saying then is, one day you're sitting with someone in an Egyptian air flight to the United States and someone is almost half body is bionic. If you look at the active and passive parts are already used, I think it's, it's done. Oh, I meant it's finished. Sorry about that. Uh, the important area is, there was a one another slide that is, to development of artificial tissue, is going to be very, very critical with the sense of the heat and pressure. So it's, it's a beautiful world, nevertheless. Don't look at all the bad things. I think it's very important is your dedication and imagination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Thanks for not sleeping. Uh, uh, still take a couple of uh, questions. 
And to make things easier, we will shift the program today by 20 minutes. So we have a short program, so we have enough flexibility. So let, let's do that. Uh, two quick questions, if any. Uh, I would like to say something about EMR. In Handbook for Biomedical Engineering, uh, they use the term computer-based spatial record. Is it the same meaning or something different? Computer-based patient record. Is it the same meaning like EMR? We are not talking about the uh, recording. We are talking about the... When you go to the hospitals, when you have...